Scoring a goal might be one of the greatest moments a footballer can have. From the adoration of the crowd, the embrace of his teammates, the wry smile from the manager who isn't in touch with his feelings. Well, I think scoring a goal would mean an awful lot more if it automatically meant it was your last game for the club. Today, the rules are simple. It is a normal Premier League season. Nothing to see here, except for the fact that if any player scores, they are immediately released from their contract after the game. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, but in reverse. So expect to see Harry Maguire camouflaging himself as the pitch and Alexander Mitrovic taking out a referee with a bow and arrow. Now, because I like to maintain the veneer that this is an FM experiment and not just the equivalent of leaving a toddler with a magnifying glass too close to an anthill. I've simmed this exact database five times under totally normal circumstances so we can get an average league position and average points of the teams in a normal world. That way we have comparison data to see who this unimaginable nonsense is going to affect the most. Feel like an academic trying to justify himself to the funding board. Yes, we do need 3,000 gallons of semi-skimmed milk and an Olympic diving platform, but trust me, it's for science. It'll work super simple. I've set up a screen flow that will show us every Premier League fixture after it happens so I can right click on a player and release them into the great big Bentley dealership in the sky. Now, obviously, in transfer windows, they will be able to pick up players to replace the ones that have been released. But since there are rules regarding how many clubs a player can play for in a single season, as the year wears on, things are going to get quite messy, especially during the sections once the transfer windows have slammed shut. I can totally foresee a scenario where teams are finishing off the season playing regens that they get from their very first youth intake up front. And I, for one, can't wait. But first, if you are one of the 66% of people that watch the videos that aren't currently subscribed, consider changing that. What I lack in FM Insight, I can make up for it in unhinged football fever dreams. So here we are. The Premier League is as it is. We'll check in with the comparison stuff later in the video to see where this all lines up. But I'm still expecting to see some mad stuff, especially with the top scorer charts, let's be honest. So the first Premier League fixture of the season is Chelsea versus Tottenham on the Friday night. We're going to get to that and we're going to see if anyone scores and you'll get the idea of how things go very, very quickly. We'll also, of course, be keeping an eye on the transfers and all sorts of other jazz as we go along. So um, grab your popcorn, grab a brew, let's get moving. Well, to the surprise of absolutely nobody, Harry Kane has scored for Tottenham and that means that will be his last game in a Spurs shirt. Now, whether he'll rock up for anyone else this season, there's definitely a strong chance of that happening because as far as I'm aware, players can play for two different Premier League sides in the same season. I think it's two. Maybe this will break it and we get more. I don't know. But I could fully expect to see Kane scoring for someone else in this exact same transfer window. I think he'll be gone by August though. All I have to do is click on Harry Kane, go up to the top and terminate contract. Boom. Harry Kane is now a free agent and it's as simple as that. And that will happen every time someone scores a goal. Now, Chelsea have been clever. They've put Broja in in this match, presumably off the bench. And that means they're actually not going to lose like a massive first team quality player in this first game and still get away with the points. So a strong start for Chelsea, but bye-bye Armando. See, it's these types of results here for Everton. This is the sort of results you want. Arsenal and Everton here, although losing Erdegaard, not ideal. Liverpool doing okay because at least Bobby Firmino scored both the goals. What you don't want is a situation like this with Leicester or Man City, where three different players have scored in the same match day. They may have won, but at what cost? They've lost Madison, Doosby Hall and Dennis Pratt in the same game, and City will lose Silver, Stones and Mares in the exact same match as well. And if they lose too many too fast, I mean, how are they going to be able to sign enough players just to keep up? So all of these guys, goodbye, my friends. Now, obviously, we're not going to check in on every single match day, otherwise this video would be longer than my FM24 wish list. but I'll be still checking in and showing you some interesting stuff, as well as the league tables, transfers, and once we start seeing players I don't recognise, that's when things really do take off. But for the moment, in August, I suspect they'll be able to replace a lot of these players, although it will come at a great cost. Now you can see going into the second weekend of the season, certain teams again have had some good starts. Leicester have actually won both games so far, um, but it has come at the expense of losing five different first team players. Although a good win over Manchester United there, Fulham beating Arsenal, but now they lose Mitrovic and Pereira, presumably bow and arrow to the referee. We already know about that. Chelsea, despite losing to City, do only lose Kai Havertz and City have just lost Holland and Grealish in the same match day. It's not going to go well for them, I suspect. And something I do wonder about is if as the season wears on, we're going to see lower and lower amounts of goals scored in the matches as the quality of strike forces are generally speaking going to be a lot lower. And after two weeks of the season, well, you can see Forrest with double wins on the board already, which is very impressive from them. De Bruyne, though, with three assists, he can just keep feeding players no matter who they are. I could still see him getting like 10 assists this season before he inevitably does accidentally score a penalty or something. Well, it seems some of the teams are taking this quite seriously already as the first four fixtures on that day contain just two goals. <laughs> if a player is on loan, they'll have their loan terminated as well. Less 
Leicester, though, do lose, but do also lose Harvey Barnes as well. There's De Bruyne. I spoke too soon. City now down Diaz, De Bruyne, and Alvarez as well. It's also worth noting that Luis Diaz has just scored for Newcastle. Um, that's his second club already. Man is done. That's him done for the season. He scored for Liverpool and he scored for Newcastle, and that's it. Another player's just finished his season there with Bernardo Silva, who must have signed for Spurs. Once the window shuts, we'll actually have a proper look and see where all the moves have happened in there too. But Bernardo Silva now done for the year. As Liverpool throw away Milner, Darwin Nunez, and Mo Salah in the same match to beat Wolves. Lads, you could have done it with one. With match day five, seeing Man United lose Marcus Rashford in there too, and Liverpool losing Carvalho and Gakpo, I do wonder which sort of big name players for certain clubs are going to be able to survive the longest, especially in the forward lines of various teams. On the final day of the window now, let's uh, see where this all shakes out. Okay, so the transfer window is shut. The league looks like this. Liverpool have started extremely well with plus 12 goal difference, but that is going to have cost them so many players, and that will presumably come back to bite them. The biggest surprise for me so far is Forrest, up in third. Only a plus four goal difference, though, which means they're just picking up little points with one goal here, one goal there, and it's saving them currently. Uh, Man United, very different story. They started strong with a decent number of goals, and they've just not played that well anyway. They beat Fulham, drew with Liverpool and Newcastle with a couple of, like, low-scoring affairs, but then they haven't even scored that many goals. They're just bad at the moment, apparently. They don't care about the system. They're just bad. Bernardo Silva, the top scorer in the league, of course, with three. Uh, he got two for City, I think, and then one for Tottenham before finally being retired. But let's look at the transfers, because this is where it's going to get mad. So I mean, Liverpool have actually only signed one player, and that's Timothy Castagna. They don't need them, apparently. City have brought in Ferguson, Coman from Manchester, sorry, from Manchester, from Bayern Munich. Walker Peters, Loftus Cheek on loan, and Raheem Sterling uh, again. <laughs> He's already gone, by the way. United have got Alvarez, Gakpo, and Matoma. Those are good players, which they will then lose within about two weeks. Newcastle's been kind of busy with Diaz, Son, Jesus, Gundogan, Facundo Torres for 11 million quid and Wolf Sahar. At least they're picking players up. Forest have only got Watkins, Pratt, Barnes, Leon Bailey and Jordan Ayew. That's a nice little core they've built there. Southampton have literally only signed Ryan Yates on loan. Spurs got Silver and Havertz, obviously. West Ham got Alron, McGinn and Armstrong. Wolves got Billing, Smith. They also got Isco actually on a free at the start of this before I even began this experiment. Milner and Jonathan Bamba for 16 million pounds. They're getting a lot of frees because they can. Arsenal got Bowen and Pereira. Villa, again, they got Brohoff right off that first one there with Mitrovic in there, Solanke, Tony, Dewsbury Hall, Ian Acho. Villa look pretty stacked right now. Bournemouth have signed no one. Not, not one player. Have they just not scored any goals? Brentford got Banford, Lingard, and Nketiah. Brighton got Moutinho and Umyarov. Chelsea so far have actually only got Saka and Mares. Everton have March, Mora, Villagra, Jamal Lewis, and Damsgore. Fulham just have a dude called Ricardinho. That, that is it, and that's just a signing. But you get the idea. So now we're going to start doing some bigger chunks, sort of checking in month by month, unless anything absolutely major happens, until we start seeing some very, very interesting names indeed. So September is now out of the way, and we are well into October. You can see Liverpool stretching their legs at the top, still unbeaten, but that has come at a cost. That's 16 plus goal difference. So let's just look at the big table so you can see the goal scorers. 18 goals scored. That's a lot of goals. I mean, that's a lot of players. That's going to have cost them at least double digit players so far. Chelsea actually really are playing this quite smart. Only nine goals scored this season means that they're just sort of hovering away in sixth place, but picking up points very, very slowly in there as well. Only two goals conceded for Liverpool is kind of mad. But you can see that Brighton being 20th and Wolves being fifth, there is a six point gap between 20th and fifth after nine games. I could see a team getting relegated with over the 40 points. And I think we could see a team winning the title with like mid 70s this season. Because as good as Liverpool's start has been, they can't sustain that by getting rid of that many players, especially now in the stretch through to Christmas. Foden, now the top scorer in the league, he actually got a hat-trick in a game for City, which was, I think, back here, uh, somewhere around here. There they go. Th a 3-0 victory over Arsenal was enough to get Foden the hat-trick, and of course, that means he will be available for another side at some point. So I could see him maybe getting four or five this year if it just happens to be the right teams. Well, Chelsea finally lose Madrid and Aubameyang. It took till October for Madrid to score a goal, but he has done it, and Aubameyang's also scored a goal, but losing them both in one game is is bad. They've also got uh, Rodrigo de Paul there at Manchester City, so that's not bad for them too. One thing we'll be doing at the end of the video as well is looking through the squads of each of the Premier League teams just to see how many players they have left in them, basically. Well, DCL's back, and now he's gone. Chelsea really are playing this extremely smartly. A 1-0 win with a guy called Mason Burstow, a youngster at Chelsea there, with the winning goal. This is what they need to do. Got an own goal here. This also counts. You score an own goal, you're still getting released. I will, of course, make the save file at the end of the season available for you to download in the description so that you can uh, have a little peruse through some stuff yourself as well. As Chelsea continue, I think they've won every game in October. Like 1-0, 1-0, 1-0, 2-0. They are killing it at the moment. And that concludes October. Liverpool still top with 33 points. Um, the goal difference is still decent. City kind of getting in there too, but Villa just continuing. That low goal difference is really helping them. The one defeat. Chelsea have flown up the league now into fourth spot. Uh, four straight wins will very much do that to you. Nobody, I think, is going to be cut adrift, honestly. Fulham are looking particularly poor, but nobody's looking genuinely awful at the moment because nobody's put... I don't think I've seen five goals scored in a single game. And I don't think we will for the rest of the season. No changes to the top scorers, as you can imagine. And I reckon the top scoring team doesn't score more than 
60 goals. Situations like this must really suck. Losing 1-0 to an own goal and still losing a player. That's the true cheek. Get them to score the goals for you. Problem solved. See, it was going so well. 1-0-1-0-0-0-1-0-0-0-1-0. And then these two had to come along and ruin things with the evening matches. Just noticed as well, Harry Kane. I don't think I've seen him score for another team. And maybe he's been picked up by a team outside of England and it's just ruined it. <laughs> yep, man's doing fine. Seven goals for PSG. He's away from this mess and he's never coming back, apparently. Super off topic, but Portugal just won the World Cup beating Ghana in the final. With France and the USA being the third place playoff game. What in earth happened in this World Cup. Actually, the league is somewhat looking a bit more normal towards the top, with Liverpool still up there, but only a three-point lead now. It's They are starting to drop some points in some games. I just can't imagine how they're doing this with that goal difference being as it is. But Villa, they're not scoring many goals, they're not conceding many goals, and they've currently got 39 points on the board at the halfway stage of the season. Now, that will obviously drop as the season goes on, but they are looking very comfortable for Champions League this year. Danilo, now a Forest, has five assists this season. He's doing it. He's doing his very bloody best. But now the January transfer window is open. Suddenly big names from continental sides suddenly will start popping up as goal scorers in the Premier League as they try to scramble to rebuild their squads. But really, it's once January shuts because then they have four months and at least probably 15 games with which they're going to have to just lose players constantly. And I'm looking for some regens to start scoring goals once April, March starts coming around. And Leicester City just made a colossal error here. I believe on the match there, they're the only team that scored more than one goal, but they scored three to beat Saints. It does lift them out the drop zone. Things have got so bad, even Donny van der Beek has got himself a game for Manchester United. And that's his last game for Manchester United. Liverpool just spent £47 million on Rafinha, only to have him score twice and then immediately get released. Phil Foden, I think, has now become the first player to score four goals this season after signing for Chelsea, immediately scoring on his debut, and now he is done for the year. But four goals is quite a task, and I don't know if anyone's going to be able to reach four. What a tally that is. Okay, with January out the way, the top of the league is looking very similar. Liverpool still out in front somehow. Uh, Villa still keeping pace with them relatively easily, you might even say. Chelsea up into fifth at the moment, although weirdly their manager is apparently about to get sacked. Wolves in the relegation zone with 22 points after 21 matches. This is what I mean. Southampton the only team that are actually looking cut adrift and I don't know how they've managed that. Liverpool have been somewhat busy with Aya, Sarmiento, Rafinha obviously that was 42 million in the end. Rodri on a free, Joao Pedro for 30 million pounds, Rebic on loan, Joe Linton on a free. City have been very busy with Chilwell on a free, uh, Rudrick Paul obviously was alone, which has now been terminated. Uh, Talis Magno <laughs> was a free transfer. <laughs> uh, yeah, free transfer. Rugani, Fafana, Renato Sanchez on loan. A guy called Xavier Godwin. United have got Adama Traore, Trossard, uh, Lerma, Oxlade Chamberlain, Willock, Mudrick as well, and a few proper transfers in there too. Lucas have actually only signed Sam Greenwood and Mohamed Kudus. Southampton have not signed it. Have they just not scored a goal in January? They didn't pick a single player up. Are you mad? Are they just sandbagging to get a bit of draft pick? Do they realise this is not, that doesn't work like that? Spurs have been busy though with Gomez, Canate, Cole Palmer. West Ham have been super busy with Sinistera, Eriksen, Elanga, Davis, De La Feu. Wow, Tom Kearney on a free. Arsenal fairly quiet too. We've got Jacob Ramsey, Saul, um, a guy from Galatasaray and Yuri Thielmans as well. Villa got Garnacho, Grealish, Bentancur and a guy called Jason. Bournemouth just signed Scott McKenna on a loan. They're going down. Bournemouth, Southampton, gone. Brentford got Lukic, Piro, and Tuma. I think those three, basically. Bournemouth, Southampton, and Brentford, I think, are all gone. Brighton doing it right. Elia Nusi, Ben Rama, Anthony, Ben Davis, Martinelli, Henderson as well. Ango Gomez, Danny Ings. That's better from Brighton. I could see them finishing well into the top half with having just more players. To the surprise of nobody, signing everybody. Walker, Botman, Malera as well. Foden, of course. Jota, Harvey Elliott, Mkhitaryan. Wow, on a loan. Orsic, Mansverk from Mulder. A couple of guys from Dortmund on loan. Thomas Lamar. Everton got Pulisic. Sapelli and Bondoza, but that's not great from them. But, you know, they got Cole Palmer, Suleimana, and a couple of other guys too. They're, they're struggling. I think they could be in trouble too. Leeds got Diop, Fafana, Carlos Vinicius, and Jamie Donnelly. It's not bad. Leicester with uh, Watara, Mateta, Duran. That's it's okay. Well, then again, Leicester needs someone. I don't think that's going to be enough. Now we move into February. Uh, where they can't sign anybody, and all these players are going to be gone by the end of the month, I suspect. <laughs> United have lost Mudrick immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got a win. Nice little story here for you. Villa have re-signed Jack Grealish, and he's now scored a goal against Manchester City, which is the winning, well, not the winning goal, but but they have now lost him again. But he had an impact there, and that's a good win for Villa, especially with Liverpool losing here. Also worth noting, Chelsea have won, but at what cost? They have literally lost three of the signings they just made in one game. I'm quite enjoying the idea of a game where a team is 1-0 up, and they're going towards the goal, and the manager's just screaming, no, take it to the corner, and it's like 35 minutes into the game. Things have gotten so bad at United that Harry Maguire's been forced to peel off his pitch-painted face paint and actually join him with the goals. And it is worth noting a lot of these goal scorers now, we're talking like 19 year olds, 18 year olds, people that aren't even in my face pack basically, but are still real players in the youth teams of these clubs. 
I believe. So we're out of February, into March. Liverpool still lead the league, but only by a single point over, of course, perennial title chasers in this save. Aston Villa, followed by the usual suspects after that. Leeds United making a nice little run for the top. Brighton, despite all those signings, I've had no effect and they've slipped all the way down to 13th place. Down at the bottom, it's a similar story. It's once again, a point per game is just about enough to keep you up. Southampton have brought the gap back a little bit, down to only four points. Maybe they could stay up, but I just don't think they will. It's actually kind of mad, by the way, that Cole Palmer scored two free kick goals. Now, he has three goals this season because he got one for Fulham and two for City. I'm fairly certain that he scored a free kick for both Fulham and for Manchester City in the same season. Remarkably, Ruben Neves has just got his first goal of the season for Wolves and will finally leave the club. But in March, I know he's not a prolific goal scorer, but I would have expected one or two from him from now just because of the lack of players. But there we go. He's finally gone. Well, now that we're out of March, things have started to take a turn. That early lead that Liverpool flew themselves into with that massive goal difference has really, really hurt them. And it is now starting to have a massive effect. Villa, now ultimately with Liverpool having a game in hand, are now three points clear at the top with 10 matches to go. Now, the question is, have Villa played this smartly or are they going to start to lose players as everything gets very close towards the end of the season? The bottom is looking exactly as we expected there with Leicester on 27 points. It might not quite take 40 points to stay up, but I'm not sure. Southampton, though, now seven points from safety, and they seem to have got worse again. Philippe Coutinho, though, seven assists in the Premier League this year. He's doing a remarkable job of not scoring a goal, but he is providing goals, and that is really something. My friends, I have jinxed him. Philippe Coutinho has now scored his first goal of the season and will leave Aston Villa, but he does give them yet another victory in there, and things have got so desperate at Brentford that Romeo Beckham has actually got in the team and somehow scored a goal for them. He's actually made 10 appearances for Brentford this season, so fair play, Romeo. Um, he's actually scored in the Premier League. There we have it. I don't think it's every single match, but that is almost all of the matches for this week, and not a single team has managed more than one goal. In fact, there were only two matches that ended with more than one goal in them entirely. This is the kind of boredom we hoped to create. There it is! The first regen! There he is, Kit Edzies, which is a fantastic name. Born in Ormskirk, England, actually, but he is an Irish uh, player. I think that is the first regen we've seen scored, and there might be another one that scored on the same day, but earlier, but it's this chap here for Bournemouth, uh, who sadly his Bournemouth career is very short-lived. Sorry, Kit. To be fair, with attributes like this, I can sort of understand why it took so long. Ah, as things shape up like this. Villa at one point did actually pull into a seven-point lead, but the problem that they've got is that three-game advantage Liverpool have. I'm curious to know how the English sides have got on in Europe <laughs> because all the, they must have been doing dreadfully. But they are still four points clear. I, I think Liverpool might be on the upward trajectory again now. Uh, Man United slipped down to seventh as Forest stay right in there, but look how tight it is in there from mid-table upwards. Brighton starting to pull it back. I still think top half of them is definitely possible. Down at the bottom, it's still around about a point in a game to get to stay up. Saints are backing it slightly. They're only six points from safety, but they just need to wins and they don't have any players. Danilo has 11 assists this season for Nottingham Forest. That is astonishing. Another regen. I know he's got a face, but that's because of the Z-Gen pack I have on. He's 15 years old. Rogerio Muchanga, um, who is English Mozambique. That's dope. Obviously, this is completely... The face is just from my other save. I haven't bothered to switch that off. He's not a bad player, actually. I can see why it only took him four games to get his first Palace goal. I really do hope we get a situation where a regen player scores on their debut and just is immediately released. Chelsea get a regen through, and he does score on his debut. There we go. Marlon Keys of Hayes, and he's Irish as well, in the back end of that, but he is gone on his debut. He's not even a striker. Just immediately released. Just to show you how things are shaping up going into the final match day, it is neck and neck at the top of the Premier League. Villa and Liverpool, both on 69 points. Nice. I said mid-70s. It's not even going to be mid-70s. It's going to be at the lowest, or the highest, rather. It could be 72. Saints are gone. Bournemouth are gone. And it's going to be either Palace or Wolves or Leicester that could go down in their place. But Palace have got that extra game in hand. Well, Palace lose to Newcastle, so that's them pretty much in the mud. And there we have it, the final match day. Villa and Arsenal draw, which means Liverpool beat Fulham, and I told you. And it was Bicetic was still playing there, actually, and scored the winning goal for them, too. I'm going to release these guys just to see if there is any regens in these teams. But to look at the actual league, Liverpool win it by two points. Villa in second with 70. City and Chelsea sneak into the top through spots. Forest, sadly, don't quite make it into Europe and actually end up coming ninth below Leeds. Brighton, who I predicted to do better in that second half of the season, just didn't. 50 points, though, I suppose, isn't bad. Uh, Leicester stay up with 37 points is their tally, which they needed to stay up as well. Palace, Saints, and Bournemouth go down. Incredibly, Southampton don't finish bottom. They actually went on quite a nice little run towards the end of the season, getting 33 points, and it's Bournemouth eventually that actually finished bottom of the league. But the fact that Danilo has been able to be so much better than everyone else, played 34 matches, didn't even have a sniff of a goal, it would seem, and fair play to him. Goals, well, <laughs> look at the appearances. Foden, two apps, four goals. Definitely deserve it. He's the only player that managed four goals. He got a hat-trick for City and a goal for Chelsea, and then it's just 
everybody else on three. A few has managed to get three and only three appearances. Lots and lots of threes. Uh, we can't even see any further down. It's just Foden and then just everybody else. Incredibly, Sam Greenwood of Newcastle had the highest expected goals with 7.45. And William... <laughs> Man had 6.49 XG and didn't score a goal. He just loves sticking around Fulham so much. He managed to play 34 games and didn't bend one pinger into the top corner like he normally does. William had 64 shots and didn't score. How many of them were on target? 16, to be fair. Dale Lefeu managed 17 shots on target and didn't score. The top scoring team in the league was City with 47. <laughs> Imagine winning a league title in the Premier League, scoring 47 goals. The lowest scorers were Bournemouth with 19. They averaged a goal every other game. That is just appalling. Liverpool top scorers in the Premier League, or not top scorers, the winners with 45 goals scored. What a, what a year to be a fan of football. Arsenal get into the <laughs> Arsenal get into Europe with 32 goals scored. Wolves, the worst defence in the league with 44 goals conceded. Uh, they do manage to stay up though. Bournemouth only scored in 14 matches. They, they were shut out 24 times this season. They actually started okay. They had a lovely little run here. It, it's, it's this bit here. Uh, where... <laughs> They lost all of these games and didn't score. Oh, sorry, they scored one goal between January and the end of March. In fact, the start of bloody April. Then it got a bit better for them. Didn't concede in four games. And then it went straight back to this again, where they didn't score in the, any of the last five matches of the season. So I suppose the thing we can do is have a look through the current squads. Now, the defences look pretty straightforward for them, really. You can see they're playing Ewan Pollock up top, though, with Traore off the left-hand side and De Costa off the right. Arsenal have a guy called Zach Orr up front with Souza and James Sweet in there. Uh, Creole's still in there. They've still got Tommy Asu, Gabriel, Saliba, Ben White. I guess this really does show, though, that when you completely remove the quality of attacks and have only good defenders in a league, it does create terribleness. What if there's a way that you could almost reverse that situation where all the teams have trash defenders? Like, maybe every time you get booked, you get released. <laughs> and it's just goal fest for the entire year. Villa have got Mikel Barnes and Dylan Mitchell up top, but they've still got Ashley Young in there, then Donkers in there. Uh, they've got Callum Chambers at right back, Conser, Diego Carlos, Dina. Like, that's solid. E Emmy Martin is in there. I mean, th that was maybe obviously getting rid of a couple of them late on there, but that's um, a wow. Yeah, the defence again is still looking solid. Some of them did lose quite a lot of defenders. Brighton's looks fairly okay. It's up front where, as you can see the numbers on the players, you know, with Bailey Smith, Ben Wilson, Salil Bashir, Adam Lallana though, is just anchoring that role lovely with Moutinho. Chelsea's one. I mean, look at the numbers. Lewis Hall actually didn't. He made 12 appearances, didn't score or assist. Uh, Castle dying up through the middle. Mendel Aduwu in there. Williams. Palace, well, no striker there. Um, Bar well, MacArthur's still there. The defence is, yeah, just unaffected. Everton finished with Barker and Whitaker up top. Uh, Heath, Zapelli, Onana. Midfield is basically just strikers, although there's a guy called Quake in goal. Sorry, in goal, in defence. Fulham ended up with a regen up top in the end. Kubiak, uh, Willian on the right, of course. Luke Harris in there and Sylvester Jasper. Leeds had Alves and another dude who I almost certainly released on the final match day. Leicester with Duran, uh, Masawanhise, Alves, Will Hughes. Men That's not a bad team. Liverpool ended up with Kumas up top. Schultz, Gordon, Rodri, Fabinho. It's still a decent team. They were able to put together Bednarek. <laughs> Jan Bednarek in the Liverpool defence there. Did not see that one go through. City with Rugat. Hang on, what? <laughs> Hang on a minute. City for the last two games of the season played Daniele Rugani up top. That's desperation for you right there. They got a guy called Robertson on the left. They got right in there. Alpha Ruprecht is a great name. United had a guy called Norkit up top with Ennis, Traore, Iqbal in there too. Newcastle's that's not looking great, is it? The, look at the numbers. They're very, very high indeed. Even the defenders, actually. They seem to got they got decimated. Forrest, uh, with yeah, I mean the regions in there, lots of high numbers, but they got Dennis Pratt in there. The defense looks pretty stable, and I think that's what did it. Vokins, Doyle, yeah, Southampton, their defense didn't change a great deal, but it did certainly get weaker. Burrs, I mean, they were kind of all over the place here with long leg Dorrington Romero in there as well. Lions Foster and Tanganga. And Matthew Craig up front as well. That definitely won't have helped. West Ham with Dale Effect playing up front for 15 matches didn't score remarkable Wolves' team is actually looking quite complete but it's just sort of been slowly decimated i guess so now onto the comparisons i did with the five different one year simulations that i've now averaged out so i'll put the data on screen right now so you can sort of see that as a comparison next to this uh, it's fairly simple to read the bit highlighted in green is the points average over the five years for the teams and the bit highlighted in yellow is the average position they pretty much line up almost exclusively except for some slight differentiation with west ham's finishing position so you can see that liverpool on average second spot so for them to win this is actually fairly impressive 
will take. City usually blow everyone out the water, so for them to only get 64 points this season is actually quite depressing for them, I suppose. A lot of defeats in there that maybe could have been avoided. A lot of 1-0 defeats in there. I think they maybe just shut out the traps too hard in certain places. Villa, I think, are one of the biggest surprises. On average, they were the eighth best team in the Premier League, so they should have been sitting around about down here, but the fact that they challenged for the title and were so close to winning it is definitely one of the bigger shocks of this. The rest of them are sort of around where you'd expect them to be. You'd expect sort of Chelsea and Arsenal in the top four, possibly instead of Villa in there with Spurs and Manchester United just on the fringes of the top four. After that, you'd expect to see Newcastle sort of around about here. Uh, they were very close to it, but in the end, it didn't quite work out for Brighton. Actually, finished exactly where you'd expect them to, uh, 13th, and that's where they finished, surprisingly. I'm surprised by that. I feel like FM kind of underrates Brighton in some ways, considering how good their squad actually is. Um, maybe it's just that the players aren't valued as well as they are in real life. Fulham just about managed to stay up in 15th spot, which is pretty much about right as well. So Leicester, Brentford and Nottingham Forest were the teams that predicted to go down over that period. And you'll see that, well, Nottingham Forest were nowhere near it. Leicester just about survived and Brentford comfortably mid-table. So not anything near. Now, I think this has definitely had an impact. Southampton, it ranked as the ninth best team over that period. They were regularly finishing. You can see from their positions, ninth, 10th, 10th, 13th and 7th in those tests I did. They never really looked in any danger and well they were in great danger as we can now see palace were a little bit closer to the bottom as you can tell and bournemouth were sort of a mid-table side in there as well now maybe more sims would have given us a bit more accurate but southampton were just regularly mid-table so the takeaway for me and this is villa massively overperformed with this uh, I don't know what it was, but they just seem to be in the right place at the right time to take advantage of this. And Forrest as well, who, well, when you look at the points tally on average, 33.2, they were way below everybody else. And yet in this, comfortable. They were never in any danger. And at one point, I actually thought they might get in the Champions League. Less chaos than perhaps I was expecting in terms of the league results, but lots of chaos I'm sure you'd agree within. Controlled chaos. So if you have enjoyed this video, drop a like. That'd be fantastic. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be lovely too. Stream on Twitch, of course, you know, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, uh, usually around this sort of time of day. I might be live today. I might not. We just never know. Go and find out. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.